I'm on a natural high, but I land perfect. This is Mark Bell from supertraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. This message is brought to you by The Power Magazine and The Slingshot from howmuchyourbench.net. I got a bunch of questions to get to. A couple questions are about uh, nutrition, about supplementation. Uh, somebody asked, they sent me a question, asked me about what I take to prevent getting sick. It's something I wrote about a couple of times, put some stuff up on Facebook about it. But uh, vitamin D3, it's over the counter. You can go to like pretty much any uh, pharmacy, even a lot of the supermarkets have it now. Uh, vitamin D3, it comes, this one is 5,000 IU. I probably take about five to 10 of those per day. Um, if you're feeling sick, you can double that dosage even and take a whole lot more. D3 is, some, is vitamins that basically come from the sun, but nowadays we don't get enough of it and um, seem to be very effective in keeping me healthy. I haven't been sick uh, with the exception of one time with kind of a, just a sinus infection. Um, so I got sick one time in about 15 months, and normally I get sick a lot more than that. It's also great for uh, calcium absorption, which uh, is important for bone health and bone strength. Um, somebody asked me a question about Yohimbi, Yohimbine, which is right here, I think. Um, a lot of like, there's a lot of mixed reviews on its effectiveness. I don't know how effective it is, but I still take it. If there's a chance that something will work, I will try it. I will use it. Um, I use it every morning at about 4 a.m. Um, and the reason why I do that is because some of the research says that it's pretty much only effective on an empty stomach. Um, I like to eat pretty much all day long. And I don't have an empty stomach at any other point in the day except for at that time when I wake up to use the bathroom. So 4 a.m. I pop three of those. Each one's 2.5 milligrams. And I feel like it's it's um, had some effect. I'm somebody that has had um, kind of back fat and uh, love handles. And I think that it's kind of helped with that. I've also uh, think that low-carbohydrate diets uh, help with that, help with back fat, <laughs> believe it or not. But uh, I do think the Yohimbine was somewhat effective. If you're fat, I wouldn't really worry about it. Uh, if you're tightening up and you're starting to get pretty lean, then maybe I'd think about it. Uh, it's hard to see something's effectiveness if you are 40 pounds. If you got 40 extra pounds of body fat hanging off, you wait till you're down a little bit lighter to start messing around with the fat burners. But first things first, get your diet intact and get things pointed in the right direction with that. So I got a couple other questions. Um, we're going to check some form out. Check out a squat right here. Uh, this guy is squatting 300 pounds for five reps, which is pretty impressive because he only weighs 165 pounds. He says that he's having trouble uh, with his ex explosiveness uh, out of the bottom of the lift. So let's watch and see if I can help correct his form here. Where'd he go? Should be popping in the screen somewhere. Getting himself fired up. It's always a good thing. So far, so good on the form. Doesn't look too bad. Knees are probably coming forward a little bit more than I'd like, especially on that second rep. Nice. Great effort and some good squatting. You're moving around nearly double your, double, double your body weight for uh, multiple uh, repetitions there. That's uh, quite impressive. However, if you want to be more explosive, you're going to have to try to move weights more explosively and move weights faster. You can't only move heavy weights slowly in order to move fast. You're going to have to teach yourself. You're going to have to learn how to move fast, how to move faster. Some people just get it. They have an athletic background and they just understand it and they're explosive in a lot of, a lot of movements such as sprinting and jumping and so on and it carries over into their strength training. And other people, it's something they really got to teach and ingrain up here. Um, so <clears throat> explosive power starts up here. You got to be aggressive with it. And I think you have that part of it down because after watching that, it looks like you got the right intent. But you're going to have to use lower repetitions. Uh, when you do a set of five, you're going to start to, uh, with, every, with each rep, you're going to kind of fatigue. And you're not going to be able to blast through them. So I would switch to uh, like doubles and singles and triples. 
um, mainly doubles and singles and just try to smash them. Like it might be more effective for you to do a training session where you do, let's say you squat 300 for a single and maybe the next set 310 for a single, 320 for a single, 330 for a single, and so on until it gets to be too heavy. Uh, maybe even start as light as 280 uh, so that you're moving really fast in the beginning. Um, but that would be my recommendation for now is work on uh, some type of dynamic work. Work on lowering the weights a little bit. If you're using 300 pounds for sets of five, I would say you can probably use about 280 or 275 <clears throat> for, uh, for some good fast uh, doubles. But I could be wrong. You might have to lower it. you got to go by how you feel. Go by how fast it's moving. And uh, those first two or three reps or so didn't even really move that slow. So it doesn't look like you have a huge issue out of the bottom. So number one, increase your speed by doing dynamic work. Number two is to, um, is to work, work on uh, singles and doubles and stuff like that instead of the sets of five. That goes along with dynamic work, but it also goes along with max effort work. Uh, the stronger that you get, you're going to move the weights. You'll move 300 pounds a lot faster after you squat 400 pounds and so on. So get yourself stronger. Work on some of those singles and doubles. Make sure they're clean. Make sure you're doing them correctly. Make sure you're not missing weights because that won't help you at all. Uh, make sure that you're, you're hitting good, good clean reps. Um, and then one more thing is work on some pause squats. Pause down there a little bit um, for a two to three count and then fire it back up. That'll be effective in helping you. Um, to explode up out of the hole a lot better. Otherwise, everything looked pretty good. Form is decent. You might be overextending a little bit. Um, if you've been watching the Power Project, you know what that means. I don't have to explain it any further. And we have another uh, deadlift coming up here, if I can find it. Not having any luck punching it up. So maybe we'll just go on to another question. We had somebody ask a question about 531. This is from Levy Davidson. He's asking about 531. He wants to know how he can utilize, how can he incorporate the slingshot from howmuchyoubench.net without, um, while incorporating into the 531 system without overtraining. Um, <clears throat> the slingshot can be used in a lot of different ways. The way I usually suggest using it, the beauty of the slingshot, in my opinion, is not the fact that it allows you to handle heavy, heavier singles. It's nice that it does that, but it allows you to handle a lot more volume. So in the case of 531, uh, if it's a week where you're doing sets of five, I would add the slingshot after you did your raw work, after you did your heavy set of five, I would add the slingshot in then and do a few heavy sets of five with the slingshot on. I would prefer to see you do about three sets of five. Make sure the form is good, make sure you're pausing your weights to bottom slightly, and make sure you're pressing with everything that you got. On days where you're doing three reps, same deal, three sets of three. On days that you're doing one rep, uh, three sets of one. Um, also, make sure that uh, when you're doing uh, when you're doing these sets, again, that the reps are clean. Uh, pause each rep and explode violently uh, from the bottom. You can use the same weight for all three sets, or you can increase the weight uh, each time. How you do that is uh, is up to you. We have one more question. I think I have time for this guy has a sumo single ply 700 pound deadlift. Uh, but his conventional deadlift is only 500 pounds. He's pretty depressed about it and sad. Um, the good news is whenever you suck really bad at something, um, the ability to increase it is that much better. You know how you had the most improved guy on the football team, how bad he sucked at the beginning of the year? Everybody gets all excited, but he still sucked at the end of the year. Anyway, <laughs> your deadlift can suck. You can move from 550 to 575, which would still suck but it will probably increase your sumo deadlift from 700 to 725. So hopefully you see my point there. The point of some, some of this stuff is, <clears throat> you know, to work on a weakness, 550 conventional deadlift um, isn't good in powerlifting standards, especially with a 700-pound sumo deadlift. The great thing is that you realize it as a weakness. And when you attack your weaknesses, that's when you truly become strong. So get after that, attack it. I would say one out of every three weeks do conventional or two out of every three weeks do conventional. But don't get away from your money maker. Don't get too far away from your uh, sumo deadlifting because that is how you make your money. And I also, uh, to conclude this video, I wanted to show you guys what's hanging up in my living room over here. Ta -da! Let's see if I can get the whole thing in there. Not too shabby, huh? I'll be bringing that to the Arnold 
to the Arnold Classic uh, this year, and that will be at my booth. So stop by and see us. Later.